What's up dudes and dudettes, this is uh, Brad the Guitologist here and in this video we're going to take a look at this uh, Gibson Custom Shop um, J45. This one the uh, customer has a problem with the nut. Um, it's in good shape, it sounds great, but the nut as you can see right there is a bit squonky. It looks like somebody has gotten in there before and kind of done some maybe done some ill-advised work on this nut so we're gonna try and and I know we will succeed and uh, straightening that out you can see how kind of that's you see how that's kind of routed out right there looks like somebody got carried away with a file maybe so we're gonna have to re fill this area and uh, refile it flat and uh, we should be able to get the nut back in there flat after that, but I'll show you what, I, what I'm uh, planning to do to correct this. Uh, stick around. One tip if you do this sort of thing, uh, when you get a guitar like this that um, is in for repair and the strings are in really good shape still, like they are on this one, I mean we've got really nice shine on these from stem to stern here. Um, and these, I believe, are Elixir uh, nano webs as opposed to the poly webs, which were on the uh, guitar that uh, I looked at in my now infamous Elixir, um, why I never use Elixir strings video. So definitely, I think these nano webs are a little bit um, a little bit easier to keep nice than the poly webs. So. There, there's my concession to uh, elixirs for all you dudes who uh, got your panties in a bunch over <laughs> over my elixir criticisms. Um, but yeah, what I was gonna say is one tip I, I usually do because these sound good as well. These are in these are in pretty good shape. The only thing I see actually, there's a little bit of peeling right here in the uh, picking area, and you can see there. But it's not it's not really as severe as the uh, fraying for the poly webs. I think the difference is on the poly webs the um, the coating the web coating is on the outside of the entire string, so they make the string first and then coat it. I think though on these nano webs they actually coat the windings before they wind it uh, the the brass around the core. So that's the difference. We do have a little bit, like I said right there but that's not a huge deal these strings would be uh, good for like if I were to go out to a yard sale or something and find a you know crappy old guitar I just wanted to fix up that was a cheap one and uh, slap some strings on it just to have something to play uh, I can use these so what I'm gonna do is carefully just um, pop these out and then I'll unwind them at the headstock rather than um, you know rather than clip them Okay, so here's the way I do it. The strings are already loosened, and what I usually do is I take um, take a pair of wire cutters like this and just insert along the back and then put my hand underneath, and then they pull uh, right out like so. And I can usually do this faster with a pair of pliers like this, than, and obviously I'm not squeezing these pliers, so I'm not trying to cut the pins. I'm just uh, using it for leverage. Uh, but I can do this a lot faster uh, this way. And what I usually do is I bundle up, if I'm going to save these strings, and I know some of you guys are yelling, man, you stupid cheapskate, just throw those strings away and get some new ones. Well, these are, you know, these are Elixir Nano Webs. He probably didn't put these on all that long ago. I can tell by uh, the minimal amount of wear that's on these. So these strings will actually be good strings for uh, some, you know, some, like I said, some cheapo guitar. If I'm lucky enough to get another dumpster guitar, like you guys have seen in one of my, uh, one or two of my other videos, um, you know, I might slap these on that. It'd be better than the ones that were in the dumpster. And if you want to save these, it's real easy. Just wind them up all together. And I do this so often, it's become second nature. Just do it like that a couple times. And, and then these strings, you can store them away. I might even put them in the old package or something like that and just store them away and then next time I get up, whoops. <laughs> Alright, here we are inside the guitar. Not a sight you get to see very much. Um, one of the other things my customer was complaining about was uh, some rattling going on and that's inside the guitar and I told him it was probably these wires. And you can see here one of the one of these is detached and they had it attached uh, up here. You see that? 
Uh, and that's attached to the top. That's not a very good place to attach wires. You don't attach wires to your soundboard, so I don't know why that's there. That might not even be original. Um, I'm hoping it's not. Shirley Gibson is smarter than that. You just don't attach things to the uh, to the soundboard. You don't do that. Um, so what we're going to do, that little piece right there, we're going to try to get some adhesive on that and attach that to the back of the guitar down here somewhere, um, like this one over here is attached. Okay, that's the stuff that was attached to the soundboard, uh, and that's definitely not factory. I don't think this um, the system that's in here is factory even. This has a, a little volume control right here. Um, there's our battery installed right up there. Um, and again, I don't think this is factory. You can see right, uh, where is it? Sorry. Where in the heck is it? Oh, right over there. You see right there where that was attached to the back, you see that little smear of adhesive right there. So we're going to reattach that right, right there to the back, and uh, this we'll just do away with. Uh, you shouldn't attach something like that to the soundboard. I think that's what it was. It was this, uh, whatever this tape is, some kind of, it's not even duct tape. It's kind of like duct tape, but not really. But anyway, we're, we've gotten rid of that, so I think that'll take care of the problem he was noticing. And then we'll go ahead and reattach that other uh, bit right there for him as well. All right, now that's hot glued into place, so that shouldn't be coming loose anytime soon. All right, now let's turn our attention to this nut. Um, let's uh, first thing we're going to do is remove the truss rod cover because that'll get in our way, and it looks like it's it looks like it's actually really loose already. Oh yeah, see that screw's not even that's not even grabbing anything. Uh, we'll do something about that too before we. Uh, Put this thing back up and back together um, and I'll show you what to do in the event that happens to one of your guitars also looks like maybe this one's the same way no this one's not as bad but it is stripped it's a very common thing and uh, happens on all sorts of guitar parts basically what has happened is it's it's been removed enough times and put back on that um, it's just kind of wormed that wood out. So we will fix that when we get it all back together. But for now, let's go ahead and get this nut off. And if you don't mind, just try to ignore the fact that I just said, let's get this nut off. You know, the thing about nuts is, uh, you know, sometimes they have to be shaved. Uh, sometimes they have to be fitted. Um, and every now and then, they have to be whacked with a hammer. Okay, here is the nut off of the guitar, and uh, or well, I guess it's on the guitar, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Uh, but it looks like somebody has done some weird crap to this thing. They've glued a glued a strip of card on this side, which is just a big no-no because you're when you do that, uh, you're going to be adjusting your intonation at the first fret. So you definitely don't want to put anything in between the nut and uh, the the fretboard like that because for the reason I just stated um, that's kind of uh, scary because that means maybe somebody went in there with a file and filed it out anyway and maybe they were trying to compensate for some problems I don't know yet um, but that's something we want to keep in mind they also glued a piece to the bottom to kind of jack it up so that it didn't uh, uh, so that it didn't buzz on the first fret. We are going to fix all of this without any of this stuff, and we may even be able to use this, um, what I think is the original nut also. And here's where the nut was. Um, as you can see, here's the card I was talking about that they've placed in between the fretboard and the nut. I don't know why on earth they would have done that. Um, but we will fix that. Um, also, we'll come in here and fix uh, the damage that was. It looks like somebody, see all this damage right here? Somebody got in here and got really happy with a with a file. I don't know what they thought they were doing. Maybe they, they were trying to get get rid of the old glue. But look at, look right here. 
particularly. Look at this channel that they've kind of routed out right there. We're gonna have to fill all this in. Uh, what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna mix up some sawdust, um, probably like some mahogany sawdust uh, with some super glue. We're gonna basically paint this whole area and fill, it, fill all of this in before coming back in here and uh, uh, reshaping that whole area. All right, let's remove the old super glue and the old garbage uh, from this. And what we're gonna do is just sand it off real lightly. We don't wanna take any of the bone away. We just wanna sand it enough to get rid of the old glue and the strips of cardboard material. All right, I'm gonna use a set of nut files. Um, to file the nut. Surprise, surprise. Uh, these are Stuart McDonald nut files. You can buy all sorts of different files online, but I will put a link uh, down below in the description uh, to a, uh, where you can get these particular files from Stuart McDonald if you want these uh, for your own projects. But basically all I'm going to do here is just very lightly um, file off the The material here which is includes some glue and some and a spacer and yeah somebody really went to town on this I just don't understand what they were doing really really went all right uh, no DEA if you're watching this is not heroin or anything like that what this is is um, this is the result of my grand foresight from one of my previous projects I, I had some foresight enough to save a lot of the sawdust uh, from another guitar and I think this is actually uh, probably rosewood sawdust if I remember correctly uh, but this is definitely going to do the trick um, what we're going to do is mix this with some super glue uh, to fill in the uh, spaces and, and you might even be able to see a little bit better the gouges that were left from the tool marks. Uh, you can particularly see it right here. You can see where this uh, dips down right here in this area. That whole gouge, it runs, it runs from the end, from the edge of the, uh, the fretboard there all the way inward to about halfway. So we've got a big gouge to fill there. Um, and it's not exactly level either, the whole thing. So... Uh, we're gonna build this whole area up uh, with a mixture of uh, this stuff and some super glue. The first thing I want to do here, I think, is uh, take some blue painter's tape and uh, tear off some pieces. And what we're gonna do is basically create a trough um, for this material. So what I want to do, I think, is come along the edge of the fretboard here and just put the tape uh, across kind of like this and what that's basically going to do is is uh, keep the um, whenever we fill the super glue in uh, that'll have a place to stop so it's not going to run along the edge of the fretboard and uh, you know get super glue all over the back of the neck or anything like that it's going to stop right there when we peel that tape off uh, after the glue all dries, uh, that should that should give us a nice uh, you know a nice crisp edge. All right, so first things first, uh, we need to get a little bit of our sawdust in this area, and as an applicator, I'm just going to use a <laughs> a uh, truss rod tool. Try to be conservative here. I don't want to use all of this. At least not all at once. We'll try to build it up maybe a little bit at a time here. But I do know I, I, uh, the worst of our problem is over here on this edge. So we definitely want to make sure we fill all of that. And I just want to pat it all kind of down across all 
All right, well, my super glue dispenser tip is broken off. Um, so, let me think about what I want to do here. I think I actually want to put another piece of, of tape across here just to keep my super glue from spilling over onto the headstock. So, let's do that real quick. <clears throat> This is one of those operations. It's not like I do this every day, so you just kind of make it up as you go along, and anybody who says otherwise is is kind of full of it. <laughs> and yes, that includes most of the professionals. Stuff like this is just everybody has their own way of doing things, and this is going to be my way on this one. Okay, let's see. Stamp that back down just a hair. All right. Now I'm going to use a piece of piece of something here to spread things around. All right, I went ahead and added just a little bit more sawdust to this, uh, and we're gonna allow this to set. Uh, it should set pretty hard, probably uh, really rock hard, uh, hopefully in the next couple hours, and we'll come back to this and, um, and then go a little further. Okay, this uh, mixture has set up now. Uh, let's remove the tape and see what, uh, see what we've got on our hands. I don't expect this to be perfect or pretty yet. As a matter of fact, we might have some things we need to fix. But we'll see what we have. Definitely got some cleaning up we need to do. Um, so we're gonna get get some goo gone and get uh, uh, some of this some of this tape off, and then we will get our we'll get our files and uh, gently file and shape this all down. All right, here we are, nearly done with this thing. Um, the nut is back on. I had to take the tuners off though in order to uh, do some buffing on this headstock. I had some I had one little place where the um, where the uh, glue ran down on me and uh, which I mean I guess I was fortunate that it didn't do that more but it got up underneath my uh, my little blockade so best plants of mice and men and all that 
But at any rate, uh, we got this uh, buffed up, and I'll probably do a little bit more buffing on this here to just to uh, shine it up a little bit, and then we'll get the tuners back on. Uh, but it came out pretty well, um, and we'll get a good, better look at it here in a bit whenever we can see a little better. All right, we got the strings back on, and uh, done a little bit of a truss rod tweak, and we're about to put the truss rod cover back on. Uh, so everything. Plays great, uh, sounds great, awesome guitar, um, and this uh, this made it uh, even better. But if you'll recall, we had a problem with uh, these holes being stripped for the truss rod cover. So the way to fix that is just get a toothpick. A couple different ways you can actually do it. Uh, you can get a toothpick and you can dip the end of the toothpick uh, in some super glue, and then you can put it down in the hole. Uh, what I uh, I'm going to do this time though is just put it in the hole and uh, break the tip off inside the hole. Let's see if I can do it without looking stupid. <laughs> there we go. So what that's done, it's actually put just a little bit of uh, extra wood down in that hole and it's going to give the uh, screw something to grip against. And we're going to do actually the same thing to this other side. <sighs> And we just break the tip off in there and just leave it. Um, whenever you screw the, the screw into it, uh, basically what it'll do, it'll do is smash this uh, new wood up against the old wood. And uh, it should stay after the first time we screw that in. So uh, let's give that a try. All right, the screws went in there and gripped up really nice and tight, nice and snug. And uh, as you can see... The nut also looks a lot better. It's a lot tighter and a lot more snug in there. You can still see, um, I mean, it's not perfect. You can still kind of see where the filler had to go and fill out the deep route. You can see the uh, how deep this was routed down. It was all the way down to like there, almost. Um, but that has... Uh, made it a lot better and I actually have even put some stain on this to try to stain it a little bit to match we got it pretty close and unless you're looking for it uh, you're not gonna see it uh, the other side has a little bit of a space um, and that's because and this side does actually too up here and that's just because someone had really gotten happy at some point with the with a file in here and they they filed um, they kind of rounded off the top of the fretboard uh, right up near the top there so I straightened it up pretty much as best I could to try to get everything flush um, and it didn't affect the intonation or anything I mean we're talking like fractions of a millimeter uh, but it did make a difference because it just made it look all squonky when you looked at it um, so I've straightened it up here and here we have a nice 90 degree angle and uh, I think it looks a lot better and I think the customer uh, will be happy too, I hope.